the Hill Light Phototherapy System, delivering the true science of light emitting diode low level light therapy. So, let me introduce you to Hill Light. As you can see, it's a well designed, clean system that will fit into any treatment room, clinic, or hospital. And here we have conveniently mounted the on off switch and also the graphic user interface GUI or touch screen control. The articulated arm is counterweight sprung so that the joints are place and stay hinges. This means that you can take the system and you can move it and let go and it stays where you put it without needing any locking nuts or locking clamps. At the end of the articulated arm, we have the treatment head. The treatment head has these five adjustable panels which are also place and stay hinges so that they can be adjusted to fit the contour of the patient's body. If you're treating an arm, for example, or if you're treating the face, or if you're going to be treating the back or the décolleté, you can flatten the arm out. When the LEDs are in operation, they generate light. And as they generate light, they heat up, and so do the circuit boards holding the LEDs. If LEDs get too warm, then the wavelength will change, and we don't want that. So there are cooling fans located in the heads that pull air up through to keep the light emitting diodes cool. In front of each panel, you can see an optically clear plate with a number of lenses embossed in the plate, precisely placed above each LED. These are part of our optical lens array technology, which is one of the unique technologies that sets heel light aside from other LED systems. Here we have an LED and here we have a target. LEDs normally emit light in a highly divergent beam. This gives very poor photon intensity at the target. LED energy is totally non-coherent, but with some degree of directionality, because the photons are all traveling forwards. Because LED energy is non-coherent, it cannot be focused or collimated like a laser diode, but we can add a semi-collimating lens. Because of photon directionality, this lens can squeeze the photons into a smaller beam, and this obviously increases the photon intensity at the target, thus increasing clinical efficacy. That is the principle behind Heal Light's optical lens array technology. This is what the optical lens array looks like. It's an optically clear plate with many little lenses embossed in it, exactly aligned with each LED. And then when the optical lens array is in place, you can see that the output is the same, but the intensity at the target is dramatically increased, thereby increasing clinical efficacy. Before starting treatment, it's important to set up the head at the right distance from the target tissue. Maintaining the optimum distance between heel light and the target tissue is important, and here's why. Here's a panel viewed side on with the optical lens array in place in front of the LEDs. If one LED only is illuminated, you can see that there is still divergence with very poor intensity at the target, even with optical lens array technology. However, when we irradiate LEDs beside each other, where the beams intersect, you can see a gradual growing area of increasing intensity. And this is caused by a phenomenon called photon interference. LED photons are non-coherent, as we've said, and travel in random directions, although they have forward directionality. 
Each photon has its own intrinsic energy measured in electron volts and has its own energy field. So, when photons collide at the speed of light, they interfere with each other and this results in synergistic enhancement of the individual energy fields where the beams of the LEDs intersect. When we measured the intensity from heliolite head at a distance of one centimeter, we called that 100% irradiance. Then when we measured at 5 centimetres, we found it was 105%. At 10 centimetres, it was 110%. The maximum of 118% was found at around 17 centimetres from the treatment head. Therefore, the optimal operating distance between heel light and the target tissue is around 17 to 20 centimetres. This will ensure optimum photon intensity and, of course, optimum treatment efficacy. Then the other thing we have to do is to adjust these panels so that they are facing the contour of the face. There we go. Very nice. Now we're delivering equal light to all parts of the face, even though it's a curved area. So as you see, the yellow, the 590, is scanning panel by panel. And during this first one minute, the target is only the epidermis. And in particular, um, the cells that keep the epidermis healthy. Then when the 830 nanometer uh, wavelength kicks in, uh, you won't be able to see it because it's infrared and invisible to the uh, human eye. But when that wavelength comes in, then it deals with all the cells in the deep dermis. And that's good for, for photo rejuvenation, it's for pain attenuation, uh, for wound healing, and wounds of, of all types. The final heel light head and the most versatile is the 830 nanometer near infrared head coupled with 590 nanometers. At 830 nanometers we have lower absorption in melanin and in blood and we get deepest penetration. The main biological targets are multiple cellular membranes, vascular and lymphatic endothelium and neural axons. At 590 nanometers, we have very, very poor penetration because of high absorption in blood and melanin. And the main targets for this wavelength are mother keratinocytes and Merkel cells in the epidermis. Deep penetration of 830 gives us the deepest among all the wavelengths, through the skin and subdermal layer and into the deep tissues. There is even penetration through bone. The penetration depth is approximately 8 centimetres. And we compare that with the 590 nanometer wavelength. It involves mainly the epidermis and the very, very superficial papillary dermis, with a penetration depth of less than 1,000 micrometres. However, the indications are multiple. Wound healing for both acute and chronic wounds, traumatic wounds, surgical wounds, ulcers of all etiologies, and burns. Pain attenuation for pain of all types, acute or chronic, musculoskeletal or neurogenic. Bone regeneration for even slow union fractures and ideal for osseointegration of implants or prostheses. We can also find wonderful use for nerve regrowth for transected or crushed nerves in all aspects of sports medicine, including accelerating return to play, for skin rejuvenation, for hair regrowth. However, there is one thing that is unique to Heal Light 2, and that is photo sequencing technology. Here we have the full planar array of heel light with the end on view of the five panels. You can see the LEDs and the fourth LED in from the edge of each panel is a dual chip 
LED containing also a 590 nanometer diode. You can see on this contour target when we turn the system on for the first time we get this cycling of yellow 100 microjoules per square centimeter per panel. The target tissue is mainly the epidermis and in particular the mother keratinocytes and Merkel cells near the stratum basale. In that first minute we can see significant extracellular ATP production and signaling compounds, calcium ions and protons and these are released extracellularly benefiting the epidermis. Cytokines also drop down into the dermis, preparing dermal cells for action once the 830 nanometer energy arrives. After that first minute, all of the 830 nanometer LEDs are activated, with an irradiance of 100 milliwatts per square centimeter, several orders of magnitude greater than the 590 LEDs. The dose is 60 joules per square centimeter. But you'll notice that the 590 LEDs keep on cycling, but now clinical efficacy is totally washed out. The main advantage, of course, is that 830 nanometers is near infrared and therefore is invisible. And because the yellow 590 LEDs keep cycling, the patient can see that something is actually happening. As said before, there are multiple targets for this wavelength. They are all the wound healing cells, autonomic, motor and sensory nerves, blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, muscles and bones. And this is why Heal Light 2 is a new concept in LED LLLT. That's it. Thank you very much indeed for watching.